Hello everybody, this is Jono and thank you for joining me for another one of my videos. So today I want to talk about how to create polls in Discourse. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with Discourse, it's basically a platform for building online communities. I'm a big fan of it. And polls are a great way of basically gathering input from your members and triggering discussions and engagement. I'm a huge fan of how, to, you know, when polls are used effectively. So in this video, I want to walk through what a poll is, what they're typically used for, and I'm going to walk through how to create a poll in a live community, hands-on, all the different options that are in the in the poll creator, and then how we can use polls to kind of trigger more discussion and ideas and engagement to make your community a more fun and interesting place to be. All right? So if you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to be a real superstar, hit that old subscribe button. But let's get right into it. Now, the community we're going to be looking at today is Guitar Hacks. This was set up by my buddy uh, Giorgio. I've been helping him to build out his community here. And Guitar Hacks is a place where people learn how to become better guitar players, okay? That's the whole point of it. So first of all, this blue bar that you can see here, um, if you are a, um, a normal user on, on a discourse uh, community forum, you won't see this, okay? This is something that only admins see, so you can safely banish that from your psychology. Ignore that blue box right there, okay? Now, what are polls? Well, fundamentally, it's a simple way of getting input from a lot of people. So for example, we could create a poll which would be, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? And you could have the options, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, green tea, if you want to be fancy. Um, and then someone can go and select an option. And then it gives you a means of showing like, okay, the 100 people who voted, this is what their preferences are. I actually use polls all the time. They're a really fun way of kind of getting a bit of a nap, back of the napkin kind of assessment of something. If you're just curious about something, getting people to feed into it. But what I love about polls, especially within the context of something like discourse, is they're a great conversation starter. You know, somebody can go to the poll, they can click on it, and then they can go and share their ideas and their opinions, and people can discuss the results, and people can discuss, you know, other um, elements that should have been included po in, in, in the poll. There's all kinds of things that you can do here, okay? So let's go through and actually make one. Now, it's dead simple. All you need to do is click the new topic button, and this will take you to the editor. Let me get rid of me so you can actually see what's going on. Now, the first thing you're going to want to type in is the question for the poll okay so that's going to go in as your topic title now within the context of guitar hacks i actually want to know um, what string guitars people are using so without going into guitar nerdery you know most guitars are six string guitars but some people play seven string guitars eight string nine string 12 string it kind of goes on and on and on i primarily if you're bored primarily play seven string guitars because i'm a metal player so uh, i want to ask people like what how, you know what strings are they are they using so i'm going to type this in okay paul how many strings are you playing okay now you don't have to put the word poll at the beginning here but i find that this is um just a kind of a nice way of showing people that this is a poll it's a new thing for them to kind of come in most communities don't have a lot of polls so this can be like a fun little sideshow for people to get into this thing i'm going to get rid of because uh, it thinks there's a topic and there isn't i'm actually going to change this um uh what's yeah actually no i was going to say i was going to change it to what string guitars are you playing but i think people are going to get what i'm talking about so i'm going to do that select the category i'm going to select member discussion now the toolbar appears here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click um, this little cog icon and you'll see there's an option in here called build poll. Now at this point, I can bring me back. Hello, everybody. So polls are actually pretty straightforward to build, but let me start with the first one up here, which is single choice. Now, let me, I was already playing with this. So let me get rid of that little sneak preview there, people. So um, a single choice poll is where you can select one thing, right? So I'm going to put in here um, six string, uh, seven strings. Um, let's just start with this for now. And you can see, see that when I select single choice, um, it puts them each on one line. So each line is one poll option. And it puts a radio button. So for those of you who are a little less familiar with computer user interfaces, usually a circle like this is called a radio button. It means that you can only pick one of them. Okay, now if we wanted to change this to then uh, multiple choice, this changes it to what's called a checkbox where you can select more than one. Now in the context of this poll, people will have more than one guitar, right? I do, I've got a bunch back there. So, and I play six string and seven string guitars. So I'm actually gonna go with multiple choice. Now, 
before, let me get rid of this. And I want to, first of all, before we go on, talk about number ratings. Now, the number rating type is where you can have somebody rate from on, on a, essentially on a scale, right? So let's say you have a poll, which is how much did you enjoy um, a, a, a particular lesson or how much do you enjoy this community? Well, what we could do is we could change this to 10 and say one is going to be, you know, this sucks. <laughs> and 10 is going to be, this is great. Okay. So uh, I don't tend to use number ratings very often, um, but you know, I want you to cover it here. So let's go back to multiple choice and let me add my options. So strict six string, seven string, eight string. I know I can cut and paste it, but I'm a bleeding perfectionist, people. Don't judge me. I'm going to go up to 12 string because frankly, if you start playing 13 string guitars, we need to have a, a conversation. If you're playing a nine string guitar, it's a little weird. Anyway. So uh, so here we go. So those are our options. I've made them multiple choice. Now, the second box you can have here is, is the visibility of the results. So sometimes you might want to, for example, um, uh, run the poll for a set period of time. So you can, well, let's, this one is where the poll results are always visible. Let's start at the beginning. So as people go in and, and vote, the, the, the number of voters and the results will be visible there, okay? So this is what I tend to use because I think it's a little bit more open and transparent. Another option is that you've got on vote. So this will basically um, show the results once someone's voted. It can be a little incentive for someone to vote to be able to get the results. But I personally like it to be visible all the time um, just because I feel like you don't want to necessarily incentivize someone to just go mash anything in so they can see the results. You can also have when closed. And this is where you can set the duration of the poll. Um, and then when it when it finally closes, uh, the results are displayed. And then you can also have staff only. So only the staff members, the admins of the forum will be able to see the results. I very, very, very rarely do that. Um, you know, usually it's only if I'm actually uh, polling staff members. And usually there's so few staff members, you'll just, well, ask them. So let's go with always visible. Um, now, the other thing you can have here is allowed groups. So Discourse has got this concept called groups where it's basically buckets of users, right? So you might have one group of users is, for example, um, a bunch of paid members of a, of a community. Another group may be um, a bunch of moderators. Another group may be um, a sub-community. It could be, you know, your documentation writers. Another group could be your translators. Another group could be a bunch of software engineers. So if you only want to make your poll available to a specific group of people, then you can select the group in here, okay? So, um, you know, there's these ones that, that, that Giorgio set up, but you'll also see that there's these trust levels. Now I'm gonna do a longer video on what trust levels are and why they're interesting separately. And if I've done that video already, I'll link it. <laughs> I haven't done it already as I record this, hence sounding disorganized. But for example, trust level zero is people who've just signed up and they haven't really done anything. Trust level one is where they've kind of potted around in your community a little bit. They've posted a few things. They've read some things. Um, uh, and trust level two is when people are getting much more engaged. So this actually can be a nice way of, uh, of polling kind of your more involved users, right? So for example, you could say trust level two, which is people who are generally pretty engaged in the community. They're pretty active. This is, you know, if you wanted to select that, then this is an option uh, to just kind of poll the most but kind of committed members of your community, I guess you should say. But I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to make this available to everybody, okay? Now, you can also have different um, ways of rendering the results. So I personally quite like the bar chart, which looks like, you know, a regular bar chart. I'm sure you all know what that looks like. Or you can select the pie chart, which shows the breakdown with the different areas. I personally, I don't know whether this is just me, and I'd like to know your views on this in the comments. I find pie charts a little too complicated to read, if, if there's more than like three data points. So here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think a pie chart's gonna look a bit weird. So I'm gonna select bar, bar, bar chart there, okay? Um, so that's basically, these are kind of the, um, you know, the, 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 the key areas that we wanna go. And then min and max, this basically provides, like what is the maximum number of responses that somebody can have? So I'm actually gonna put this down to three. So because this is multiple choice, um, you can select more than one. Um, but I'm going to limit it at three because I don't want people going and whacking and, uh, you know, selecting all of them. Okay. Now, the final one that you, you're going to have here and you're going to want to think carefully about here is, is show who voted. So what this will do is it will display like a little, their little avatar icon 
next to the one that ones that they selected. Now, you've got to be very careful if you're asking a poll for something a little bit more sensitive, such as, you know, what is your salary? What bracket uh, is your current salary? right, then you might want to anonymize those results and therefore not show who voted. But in the case of this, I don't think anyone's going to be particularly embarrassed uh, or offended if their, if their um, avatar appears next to their string choice. In fact, I think this will be good because I think people will then go and have conversations about what they selected. So I'm actually going to leave that uh, like that. And then I can click on insert poll. And what it's going to do here is on the left side of the, uh, hang on, let me get rid of me. On the left side, you can see uh, that it's that it's put the poll in here. Now, like everything else in Discourse, it uses Markdown. So Markdown is a language that you can use to format your text and, and other content. So here we're using this, this you know, this line here basically creates the structure of the poll, right? So, you know, it says poll, which is the command in Markdown. Type is multiple for multiple choice. Results equal always, so you're always visible. Min one for the minimum number of responses that are allowed, max maximum number of responses that are allowed. Public equals true, and then the chart chart type is bar. So it's basically reflecting our needs here. So very rarely will you go and manually create the um, will you go and manually create this markdown. You'll generally use the poll builder like we just did. Uh, but if you are, for example, more technical in nature, or you're automating creating. Um, posts in discourse, which you can do using the API, then you might do that. And then in between this and the closing poll tag, we've got our different options. So that's here. Now, what you may have noticed here is that yes, you can in fact create more than one poll. So for example, I could create this and then copy it. And you can see here that now I have two polls in here. And this is one of the great levels of flexibility with discourse is you can really put whatever you want in here. Now, just putting a poll here is kind of a little boring. So I'm going to actually wrap some content around it. So I'm going to go up here and say, hi, everyone. Um, let me think. Um, given we uh, that we are a large and growing community of guitarists, I would love to know uh, how many strings you play on your guitars. Hence, a poll. Okay. Um, you can select up to three options. Uh, as many of us play more than one guitar. Okay. Uh, whoops, and then I'm going to do that. Whoa, what am I doing, Jono? Okay, there we go. Can't type everybody. Um, and then I'm going to say thanks uh, and be sure to um, share more about... Actually, let's make this more interesting. Let's uh, let's ask them some another thing. Okay, so I'm going to say also, I would love to know what tunings you are you are playing in. So, for example, I play seven string guitars in whoop in drop A. Let's do this. So now what I'm doing, this is a subtlety. What I'm doing is I'm basically saying, um, hey everyone, given that we are playing a, a large and growing community of guitarists, I would love to know how many strings you play in your guitars, hence a poll. So now we're we're equating that, you know, we are together and we're a community and let's kind of get some insight about what we're doing here. You can select up to three options, as many of us play more than one guitar. Now what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to I'm going to click that and select bold. And again, that adds markdown so it stands out. This is what I love about Discourse. So you can make it look really rich and interesting. Then I've got our poll. Also, I'd love to know what tunings you're playing in. So for example, I play seven string guitars in drop A. So now I'm actually asking for more information and this is going to encourage more and more discussion. Uh, and let's just add here, of course, if you are playing uh, guitars with more strings, let us know and maybe share a picture because it's kind of unusual, okay? So again, I'm trying to be really, really inclusive in the way I'm doing this, okay? And that's and then I'm going to create uh, create topic, 
and then here it is and that's my brand new poll and it already lists here choose up to three votes are going to be public so it specifies the, the the rules around that and i'm going to go seven string and click vote now and now you can see my little avatar uh, is appearing over there okay and that's it, folks. Uh, I hope you found this useful. Um, again, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you find some of the stuff that I'm doing interesting, hit that subscribe button. And uh, I'll see you on the other side. Bye-bye.